Hello there and welcome back to the Nation States of Vujo Dea with me, the Lord and Saviour of the United Kingdom of Cape Breton, King William Breton, I believe. I have uh, updated all the fact books. We do have the entire royal family listed. Yes, I'm King William Breton of Cape Breton. Age 23, unmarried and head of state. What a terrific bloke. Now, we have many issues to look at. Oh, how appropriate since I have moved back to England. Banning the burqa. Schools are considering burning all signs of religious affiliation to promote unity amongst students. Minority groups and civil rights activists have expressed their outrage in protests outside Parliament. I support this 100%. Religious affiliation should not be relevant in the school. The school is about teaching students to be good and work together to achieve goals and such. And when you start having these groups of people segregate themselves with their own uniforms and such, it, it really goes against it. I used to love the school photos. I was actually looking through all my old school photos not so long ago. And it looks so great. Everyone's in the same uniform. you got the sports teams. We're all playing together and doing things. When you start allowing people to have special hats and such, it just... It ruins it. No, if if you want to be in a place where you have that special hat, go to a nation where that special hat is the normal. Don't come here and enforce your wearing of your special hat next to me. In my view, it is it is uh, is terrible. I, I I don't like it. I should have the right to tell people what not to wear, what they can wear. I want to be like Jim Kong, ill. What's his name? Kim Jong Un, that guy where he states, stayed in forced everyone having the same haircut as him. I want to be like that. None of this, oh, I want to wear a veil and a mohawk and dye my hair red. No, none of this. You'll all act uniform like a good fascist state. Anyway, the Minister for Public Unity and General Goodwill, Natalie Bourdain, has supported the claim. This move will encourage students from different cultural and religious backgrounds to mix more freely. Yes, root from any symbols of difference. Barriers of cultural otherness will be transcended and all will feel a sense of shared nationhood, which is what state schools should be encouraging. Social equality is what we're aiming for here, not controversy. Yes. This is an outrageous proposition, says shopkeeper. Of course, the pro burker is a shopkeeper. There's a bit of a joke in England that they like to run uh, corner shops. And uh, that would be seen as a racism under UK law. Let's not tell Sadiq Khan. Everyone should have the right to follow their religion. No, religions are banned. I organise my store in strict terms of religious and cultural preferences. A kosher section for the Jews should not be legal. A fish on Friday's freezer for the Catholics should not be legal. And a vegan section... Oh, well, that should definitely not be legal. Ah, for those bold people in the orange robes. Freedom and diversity is what makes our nation great. No, it is not. Not at all. It's what makes your nation divisive. And if everyone feels this means they shouldn't integrate, then don't then so be it. No, no, everybody should integrate. We should all be exactly the same over here in the United Kingdom of Cape Breton. None of this freedom and diversity. No, the only diversity is that I am a king and you are all peasants. Who needs religion anyway, asks Botrus O'Bannon, professor of biology at Cape Breton City University of Science. Our nation is swamped in these mumbo-jumbo spouted by the money-hungry crackpot in Vangelis and even jealousists. I say that people should be spared from these wacko delusions of gods and demons. All symbols of religion should be banned from all public spaces. Now that's what I call freedom now. Now we're going to go with the first one. Students on teachers are regularly stopped and searched for symbols of religious affiliation before class. <laughs> oh, what's this done? Oh, it's lowered our nudity. <laughs> Surely it would, uh, no, no, it would, it would raise our nudity. If we're banning your head, scarf, surely it bans your nudity. What is this nonsense? Why is my, my, uh, recording software just done something funny? Uh, ignore me for that second. Right, let's move on to the next issue. 
carjacking concerns. Terrified motorists are complaining about the increasing number of hijackings that are taking place outside of big city areas. This is definitely London today. Hijacking victim Howard Schultz wants the government to take action against the road pirates. Inner city crime is nothing compared to the brutality these gangs show. These gangs show. They block the roads with trucks or fell trees and hide on the roadside until some poor unsuspecting motorist pulls up. The government must introduce a special police unit to patrol these isolated areas. This is definitely based on England today. More police isn't the answer, retorts Miss Baker. Head of research at Cape Breton's largest car manufacturer. This is a job for the private sector. We already have blueprints for cars with bulletproof armor and mounted machine guns. Yes, I like this lady. If you pass appropriate legislation, we can have these things on sale in weeks. Let the people defend themselves. Yes, we are a very libertarian nation. We should support this. This just proves how cars are more trouble than they're worth, says Tim Glenn, leader of the Transport Workers Union. If the government bans cars and pours more money into public transport, everyone will be much safer and happier. Except from people who live outside major cities, of course. But then that's their choice. Yeah, I agree with this man more for the for the real world, but in our world, we're going to fucking get machine-mounted vehicles going. So they drive tank-like vehicles with mounted machine guns. Of course they do. Ooh, look at that. Industry, automobile manufacturing has gone up. Arms manufacturing has gone up. Manufacturing in general has gone up. Weaponization, obesity apparently. Economic output is up. Employment. Crime. Eh, a few things. Right, let's hit up the next issue. International community comes door knocking. Is that so? The international community has appealed to Cape Breton to increase humanitarian aid. Right, no, we're not doing that at all. We must increase foreign aid, no. Talk about a way to flush shekels down the toilet, yes. Relief wouldn't hurt us if we relieved the right countries. Ooh, we give them a little humanitarian, give them access to their arm and infectry markets, it's win-win. Now, from a little pro quo, ah. Well, let's read this one as well. We're going to ignore that one. Think tank about about Lila Springsteen. What I've noticed is that whatever we give, do give something, it's never enough. Well, that is pretty accurate. A few years later, they're back asking for more. Yes, well, look at Africa, for example. You give them aid, they have ten children, and they ask for ten times as much aid. We cannot be supporting this sort of nonsense. Best way to help these poor nations is stop shielding them from the logical consequences of their idiotic, long-debunked socialist economic policies. Yes. Just look at Africa's population boom. They can simply not sustain it. And yet here we are in the Western world being taxed to support them. And there's people in Europe who cannot afford to have two kids. Yet they're being taxed to support Africans having ten. What is the birth rate? I think it's, is it Niger or Chad or the Central African Republic? One of these ones to the north, north west of the sub-Saharan Africa. They're just ten children per woman. It's like a low is eight to them. This is ridiculous. And it's all funded by humanitarian aid. We will not be doing it. We should go for this. But if we did relieve the right countries, they might give us areas, access to manufacturing markets. No, our manufacturing is the best manufacturing. None of these fools can compete. If they cannot afford to fund their own people, how can they afford to fund good weaponry for us to buy? No, we will not flush our shekels down the toilet. It will not happen. Crime has gone up. Why? Economic output. Oh, well. Let's have a look at the other issues here. Any which may spare. Any which way spells disaster. In remote villages of Western Cape Breton, mobs of angry villagers have taken to lynching women accused of witchcraft. Concerned citizens have come to you for answers. Well, someone had to do it. Yup, self appointed head of one of the border town's lynch mobs, Edward Salem. The lady was committing witch witcheries left and right. Turned my nephew into a new cheated. I mean, he got better, but that's besides the point. The government needs to let us protect ourselves and rid our peace-loving towns of these foul she-devils. I like this guy. Lynch mod. He started his own lynch mob. We need more of this in the world. No, no, that won't work, says a tall, dark-haired, mysterious stranger walking into your office with a gust of wind staring his long duster coat and hat. He throws a crossbow onto your desk before continuing. 
These simple folk not have their own skills to hunt witches or any other devil of that of the night for that matter. But I am a monster hunter. If you set up a f sanctioned guild, we can probably hunt these necromancers. I like this Van Helsing fellow. Let's see what else here. We'd appreciate if if you would all kindly mind your own business. Chastises Hermione, Hermione Potter, who is dressed in a long black robe and pointed hat. Our tradition is a centuries old, and it's about time the Galvin stepped in and protected us. No, we're not going to be protecting witches. You'd do well to build us a proper school away from these barbarians. Oh, honestly, Ron, give me that. Oh, Harry Potter references, I hate them. She takes a carved wand from the young red-headed boy. Lego Phillies. Ah. No, no, no. Make the fill nice and long. I will not do it. Let's read this last one here. Where shall I begin? Coolie starts the head of the local planetarium. Dr. Carl DeLoyne Dyson. These people, these simple farmers, they are talking, taking what they don't understand and they're calling it witchery. This sort of unsubstantiated ignorance must be stamped out. There is no such thing as witches. Plain and simple. We need to start working towards a future free from these backward superstitions. Uh, whatever. No, we're going to we're going to fund uh, Van Helsing's guild here to create witch hunters. Bands of adventurers rove the countryside searching for monsters. Yes, this is this is definitely the nation I want. This is definitely it's look at our law enforcement go up tourism. People are coming over to see Van Helsing defense forces. Ah, uh, he can make output this up again. This is too funny. Just too funny. And lastly, select your targets. An international incident. Your government's response to over uh, overtures of aggression from the Brazilistanis has been to bomb specific high-level valuable assets in the nation. The issue is, having decided to launch a tactical strike on Brazilistan, your military advisors have drawn up a list of different targets, each ranging from terms of severity to and uh, civilian casualties. Oh. Admiral Nelson Wellington presents you with a f file fist. This is an aerial view map of western Brazilistan. We have circled in red key armament factories, military bases, and military airport. Eliminating these targets not simply ha will not only harm the enemy's ability to mobilize an effective retaliationary attack, but it also makes it easier for us to land troops on the west coast. The impact on civilians will be minimal. Well, that's not enough genocide for me. That won't be enough, Air Marshal Alexei Schmo says firmly. Here is a map of the same region, but as you can see, our targets are much more crucial on Brazil's stance infrastructure. Give the go-ahead and my pilots will unleash their bombs on the city itself. There is a 100% chance of high civilian casualties, but it is to ensure the enemy has a 0% chance of retaliation. In any way, shape or form. Good, I like this. Much genocide is exactly what we do. Or we could just nuke them. General Elizabeth Bacon says, pushing the other two out of the way. Think about it. None of our soldiers will go in, so there will be zero casualties on our side. All it takes is one bomb, so it's considerably cheaper, and it means that there's no drawn-out conflict. Can't see a loss, to us, anyway. It'll decimate Brazilistan, but they are the enemy, and this is what, yes, we're going to nuke Brazilistan as much genocide as we can get. Fuju dare hold its breath as nuclear warfare is being seriously considered? Ah. Yeah, very good. Ooh, atomic age. Thanks for everything. Ooh, very good. Weapons of mass destruction. Ooh. Let's, uh, let's take that, shall we? Yeah, well, our industry of mining's gone up a lot. <laughs> let's check out the nation. Let's see, uh, let's see how it's gone here. People, what are you dying of now? Does it say warfare? Heart disease? Oh, shit. Governments? Defense spending is at 49.3. I would prefer if it was higher. Law and order is up. Quite high. Spirituality keeps going down. The economy... Whoa, that's not... Ah, where am I going? Ah. I am second in my region now for mining. Oh, well, we don't really count the the oversized nations when we do things like this. Let's have a look at 
defence forces now. Oh, the kingdom of Hamburg has overtaken me. What is this madness? Complete and utter madness. Oh, they are becoming in a fret. Let's have a look at weaponization. No, oh, everyone else is still. We don't count this several billion population nation. Uh, what about... What about... Um, lifespan. Oh, we're pretty low compared to the rest. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Uh, yeah, if you want to join the Discord, there is a Discord server down below in the links there. And there is also a Patreon account. Go ahead and check it out. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.